Okay, so this video that I'm making is just, it's going to have a couple of topics. And one being, usually I always talk about the housing issues. And this is about a housing issue because I believe so strongly that it affects all of us. Because even if we think that it doesn't affect us, because we might be living in a different city or a different town or somehow it makes its way to where we are and we have to listen and that's like uh, among all these things that have been happening like the weather you know people getting sick um things that people take for granted they think well it's not going to happen to us or it's not in our town and eventually it makes its way to your town to your city to your neighborhood and to where you stay. And so housing, I think to me personally, I feel that housing should not be looked at as a luxury. It should be a right to all people to have safe shelter. However, I know that everybody's situations aren't ideal. And this right here, I was so unaware that this was happening. But now that I've been on this subject for so long, renting is not the only thing that is in trouble. Um, the rental market, but the mortgage mortgages are possibly um, in trouble. What I'm seeing is, <clears throat> you know, um, a lot of articles and. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but they say that there is a mortgage crisis that is on the horizon. And so I took the liberty to look up a worst case scenario. So I believe these are questions people ask when things get really crazy in the economy and that can affect millions of people so the question here, I'm going to read a few of these things before I start. Usually I, I find an interesting article that's among many articles that has to do with a specific topic. And so this one is still on housing, but it might be a, a mix of different things in there. You know, so I have to forewarn. So <clears throat> I guess these are questions that people came up with. Um, what happens to my mortgage if the economy collapses? Now, this is a worst case scenario situation if the economy was to collapse. So this is what would happen to homeowners. Recessions and housing market crashes may cause your house value to decrease. So, however, your set mortgage rates won't lower. They don't lower, meaning your monthly payment will get higher. It'll be higher than your home's worth. So, while many may dip into their savings to help pay their steep bills, others may need outside assistance. So, that's what would happen if the economy was to collapse homeowners would be affected so you know a lot of people say you know people who don't have homes they're gonna end up not having any place to live and there's a lot of things well there's from what i was reading you know there could be some other things on the horizon so what caused the mortgage crisis in 2008 so the growth of predatory mortgage lending, unregulated markets, a massive amount of consumer debt, the creation of toxic assets, the collapse of home prices, and more contributed to the financial crisis of 2008. And so these are questions, I guess, because there are some things that are happening on the horizon that they've been talking about. And so... <clears throat> Out of the Guardian, that's an article um, where it says this is ruining people's lives. Homeowners hit by UK mortgage crisis. 
So apparently something's going on not only here in the U.S., but also in the U.K. So now I'm also looking at something saying, now this is BBC News Mortgage Crisis. We can't pay an extra what looks like 1400 a month. So home truths, the crushing reality of mortgage crisis. And so this is ruining people's lives. Homeowners hit by UK mortgage crisis, they speak out. Brits are facing a mortgage crisis as lending rates are soaring. So this is what's going on in the UK. But I'm also hearing that this is something that could come down the pike and it might have already started, but it isn't being widely discussed here in the U.S. So mortgage demand bumps up at 0.5%. Mortgage crisis set to deepen the interest rates hit with 5%. Um, it's just different articles that are starting to pop up having to do with what's going on here. What was the subprime mortgage crisis and who was responsible for it? So that's an article talking about what had happened here in 2008. And so you can look at that when you get a chance. And um, so I had ran across an article called Home's Truth, The Crushing Reality of Mortgage Crisis. And so this talk is, is happening right now. And I don't think people realize it is something that could be on the horizon. So Home Truths, The Crushing Reality of the mortgage crisis and this is by kate andrews so you're really looking at a still photo of houses and and money and houses <laughs> and also i noticed that there's uk money in the background so that's what right now they're faced with and so here um in december i guess this this article is by a kate andrews so this might be people's accounts of some of their personal experience with going through a mortgage crisis. So in December, Jeremy Hunt hosted a mortgage summit and it was attended by lenders and the Financial Conduct Authority to discuss rate woes. Now this, I believe, is regarding the U.S. and <clears throat> what's going on here. At the time, the numbers were at least moving in the right direction. So during Liz Truss' 49-day premiership, the FCA expected interest rates to rise 5.5%, an increase which was forecasted to put 570,000 people into a mortgage payment difficulty. So once Rishi Sunak and Hunt undid Trust's mini budget, things looked calmer. So 4.5% peak was expected, and 356,000 people were due to be in difficulty. So Hunt was still struck by the figure, so horribly high, he thought. And so the chancellor used the meeting to lay the foundation for regulatory changes that could be used in the future to help struggling mortgage holders. So now, as the interest rates are expected to hit 6%, which would be the highest since 2001, the Treasury is working with lenders to consider repayment holidays, mortgage extensions, and moving more people into interest-only payments. Not so long ago, 6% was the gloom scenario used by the Bank of England to stress test mortgages and eventually not expected or likely to materialize. So today it's the consensus. So some 1.3 million mortgage holders are expected to renew their mortgage before Christmas. For many, interest payments will treble. So it's not hard to predict that 
what happens next? Agony for anyone re renewing fear for those a year away from doing so and the despair for the first time buyers who can see the cost of ownership soaring. Panic is setting in and home ownership is starting to look more like a trap than a ladder. So I want to leave that that saying there that there are people right now there's people in homes who wish they could get out of their mortgage and then there's those who are struggling to stay afloat. They could lose their home. They're struggling to pay their mortgage and then there are those who they're like maybe one check away from making a bad decision or uh, one event that could happen in the family away from it affecting their mortgage. And so this is the kind of things that I don't think people realize that the homeowners go through. So a whole generation is starting to experience the forces of the rattled that the economy in John Major's premiership rate rises as crushing dis, um, disposable incomes first for renters and now for the homeowners and so this disorient orientates a generation who had been told that they were in an era of low for long rates so millions base their finances and lifestyle on this faculty assumption or faulty assumption. So 35% of the mortgage holders have two years or less to run on their own deal, their, their deal or a floating rate. <clears throat> Back in 2020, the penny had still not dropped for most politicians, economists, and even central bankers that the era of ultra low interest rates was about to come to an end. So the Bank of England was printing money almost as fast as the government was spending it. So in the belief that there would be no price to pay, officials forecast now agreed by even the bank's governor to be defunct suggested that the inflation rate would always come back to 2%. So the bank had a new way of thinking that inflation was confined to the history books and the interest rates would stay low. So it was wishful thinking and dangerously wrong. So the problem isn't simply that the rates are rising. It's the uncertainty of where they will peak and that has borrowers and lenders panicking. So only two months ago, markets expected rates to peak at 4.5%. Two weeks ago, it was 5.25%. Now it's 6%. And who knows where it will be in, in the month's time. So <clears throat> the way they operate in Wall Street and the banks is everything is about money. And the way the world is, the way our U.S. economy is like money driven. And so I feel like instead of being in a place where people can all live comfortably, it almost seems as though you have a group that they don't share. They kind of hoard their money and, and, and or they hide their money and find ways to not spend it and it doesn't generate in the economy. And then you also have this low, low wage paying uh, class of people who don't make a lot of money and they're struggling to keep afloat. And then you got people who are in between and they're struggling and they're like maybe one or two payments away from a tragedy, you know, and so it, it now we're getting to the point where there almost isn't any middle person or middle class. It's like you either have have the money, or you have the financial means, or you don't, or you you're barely making. You're just just making it, and the way 
things have been going, it seems like it doesn't stop. It never ends and it gets worse as time goes by. There's no, there's no cap on any of this. And I feel like it eventually affects millions of people to where it's evident that we're moving in a place where you have like people think it's just conspiracy, but I don't believe it is. You have people who have all of this money and <clears throat> but you never see it going into communities and, and being generated in the population where that people can, you know, live comfortably or live have shelter, adequate shelter. We're we're becoming like a third world uh, as they would say third world country i believe actually we always were like that it's just we're just fancy you know here in the u.s i i feel like <clears throat> what has held us back is racism as people it's racism hatred uh people who don't they don't want to help anyone else and they hoard money or hide money. Um, there's communities that are just crumbling and, and infrastructure that crumbles because people are not really doing the right things with the money they should be spending on, you know, schools in poor neighborhoods and poor communities, making more effort to build affordable housing and then if there is housing already built to make it affordable so that people can stay there and um, they won't have to feel like they have to be displaced and move all of a sudden abruptly. A lot of the jobs that are in the inner cities, <clears throat> there's a lot of wealthy people that probably wouldn't want to work those jobs if they see what what is all involved and most of the people who work the jobs are the ones who are not getting paid livable wage to live close to where they work and so this seems to be a, a story where you'll see multiple articles talking about the mortgage crisis you'll see multiple art articles talking about all these different factors <coughs> um yet I don't see anybody budging, and I only can say this, I don't think it's going to get any better uh, before we see a lot worse, and I feel like a lot of this is coming because people just don't know how to get along with others, and they don't have empathy for human life, and <clears throat> there's a lot of negatives at work here and so like we see on tv people are arguing back and forth they're on the campaign trail as an election year right now it's republicans versus democrat democrat versus republican and you have all these people arguing back and forth about different hot button topics but yet you still have crumbling infrastructure uh, mortgage crisis on the horizon Prices that are happening in other countries that are similar to what's happening here. I feel like it's a national problem. And the homelessness crisis, it's not just here. It's spreading. And I believe it has to do with greed. That's the other baddie that I think is going on. Is There's a lot of greed. There's a lot of racism. There's a lot of... Uh, hatred there's a lot of greed going on and i think greed is probably one of the next to racism is the top on the, one of the two tops things on the list um and so i'm not surprised that there's a mortgage crisis happening because you know they try to not talk about it and they try to kind of smooth it over but when they had uh, the pandemic going on you know renters were not the only ones that had paused on their payments of rent mortgage uh, people were who had a mortgage 
paused on their mortgages. And I heard there was one bank, I don't know if it was Wells Fargo, they automatically had paused people's mortgages and someone was trying to get it reversed because they didn't want that at the end you owe all this money, you know, and you can't come up with it because you haven't been making any payments, you know, so that it just exacerbates the situation. So what do you think about this? It just seems like it gets worse and worse and worse. And you see more and more homeless people on the street. It it just doesn't change. It gets worse and worse and worse. And so... <clears throat> That's what I've noticed um, in terms of that. Um, I see a lot of building going on, but if those places are affordable, that's a whole nother ball game. There's building, there's apartment buildings going up, but I don't know if they're affordable. That's the thing. A lot of times they'll put these apartments up and the developers, they, they have a great idea to to beautify a community with with new housing but the housing tends to not be affordable for people that have lived in the community for a number of years and so that's why you don't see people moving often they stay put unless there's some kind of issue with their place where they live or they just you know, have to relocate for whatever other reasons. But yeah, yeah, I'm reading this right here. I'm reading that the U.S. our mortgage situation isn't as stable as, you know, people think it is. Um, so... Yeah, I I I don't I don't see it getting any big um you know, any better is what I was saying. I don't see it getting any better. So I was looking here. Okay, so there's so many articles I'm at as we you know, I'm looking a different kind of mortgage crisis. This is by Felix Salmon. And this is out of the Exos. So the 2008 financial crisis was caused in part by mortgage lenders taking on too much risk. And now the pendulum has swung so far in the opposite direction that the private sector has all but ceased taking on mortgage risk anymore. So why it matters, private sector risk aversion was prevented and has prevented millions of Americans from buying houses. So it is also driving banks out of the mortgage game. So that might be okay if the non-banks weren't disappearing too and unlikely to return anytime soon. So flashback, banks paid more than $100 billion in mortgage-related fines after the financial crisis, so a stark reminder that such activity can prove extraordinarily costly. So that's also uh, alongside of the more stringent government rule about how much capital banks need to allocate to such activity has resulted in what one banker described as in Axios as a de-risking in mortgage lending. So they go into how it works and about banks retreating. So most mortgage lenders, they make money in two days. So, or in, in two, in not two days, but two ways. <laughs> they have it here listed how they make the money in two ways. So after they originate a loan, they hold it on their books for a relatively short amount of time before selling it to the government. And so either directly by the Federal Housing Administration and Department of Veterans Affairs, both by mortgages, or to agencies like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. After the second 
way is after selling the loan, the originator generally continues to service it to collect mortgage payments and send them on to the loan loan's new owner. So servicing fees are low, so generally about a quarter of a percent and servicers need to make the payments even if the homeowner is in arrears. So it go into more detail about banks retreating and why it's so hard to qualify for mortgages. It also goes into that. And so I know a little bit about that. Um, actually, I know a lot, a lot about it. <laughs> but um, what I know so far, it doesn't look good the way things are going. You know, I feel like, you know, it's gotten to the point, you know, I was listening to someone was saying, he said when he first came to the city he was moving to, he said he put down 30000 The house was was worth 30000 And he said, now that's what you got to put down on the house. And he said when he came along and, and they, him and his wife decided to get into the home owning business, they only needed 30000 for this this home. But now that's what, you know, a lot of the homes are so extremely expensive that that amount of money that his home was worth back in the 90s, the 80s, I think he said it was actually even before the 80s. So yeah, it would be 30000 seemed like a lot back then. But now you'd only wish you could find a house for thirty thousand. <laughs> That's how expensive things have gotten. And so I don't know that it's going to get any better. And you know, it it has all these articles about all these different issues. But I'm I'm feeling like eventually the, the way it's looking that like. That sentence said in the article, it, it's it's not a ladder. It's more like when you get a house, it's like getting a trap. You're getting trapped into, you have to make these payments regardless so you don't lose your home. You know, replace everything that you, you, you know, work hard for. And so it just doesn't seem like it gets any better, so... When you uh, become a homeowner, you're you're having to watch all your spending. I mean, you can't really just spend money on just any anything. You have to be very careful about how you you spend money, and you should be careful even before becoming a homeowner. You should be like that, but it you feel more like you're more trapped when you're a homeowner you feel more trapped like okay i can't buy this right now i gotta wait to buy this you know um but you don't have to be a homeowner to, to feel trapped to the bills so but i feel like you automatically off the bat you you feel the trap trapping because you're taking on a loan which a loan you have to pay back and most homes, to, in order to qualify, it used to be they made a big deal about your credit, but now they've kind of pulled back some of the layers of those regulations, and it's more about your debt to income ratio. Uh, what kinds of debt do you already have before you become a homeowner? And then the other thing that they look at is how much are you making are you making a good salary? What do you make a year? And so based on those things, they just want to know if you're able to, to cover the mortgage every month comfortably and not be straddled with that mortgage payment and, and the uh, mortgage burden. Um, much like how renters are rent but burden, you have a lot of the renters who they, they're in their unit, but they could be one or two checks away from struggling, if not already. And so, um, 
when I saw it say mortgage crisis, it mentioned more about the UK, but I I do see stuff happening that it here, you know, would be uh, a problem. So I'm not done yet because I'm still surfing, but. It almost looks like, too, that um, we might still have people that are um, not being honest and they're doing things that could create 2008 to happen again, but even worse. And so I think because there was a pause on rent, that that's why their evictions have skyrocketed. Um, I believe there was the pause on the mortgage payments, so foreclosures could happen. And I think with home ownership, when you have a lot of homes where they depreciate or the values of it go down, the equity and everything goes down um, on the homes, I think it, everybody's are affected. You know, like like look look at Detroit, all those empty abandoned homes because the people don't see how everything connects, how the people don't have the jobs that they had before and they lost the, most of the things that were valued to them and you see all these boarded up homes where people can't stay, uh, the neighborhoods are, are in blight and I feel that's what happens when People are disinvested in communities and they pull their money out of the housing, the schooling, the um, higher learning education institutions, and they just move it elsewhere and they just don't have any care for those neighborhoods or those communities. And you have to fundraise and find other ways to get money into the communities because you just have people who just don't care. And all they care about is themselves or what's happening among them uh, in their circle. And they don't help others. And so that's why you see, you can see some communities, they're either abandoned or they're really, really in need of repair. Um, the schools don't have a lot of material or equipment. And you can tell the difference by the parent involvement in the schools um, and, and the neighborhoods and the community, how that looks from people pulling out uh, their money out of communities and the communities, they end up becoming um, like war zones and dilapidated and then you see what makes way for neighborhoods to turn into ghettos and it, it becomes places that people don't want to live it's unsafe crime rises because of the blight and not having enough uh, educational opportunities and jobs to make their needs their basic needs even met and so that's i believe could be exacerbated in the near future because of the way money is not being handled well. And so that's what this video is mainly about is I'm seeing something that doesn't look good. I don't know if you can see it and it's not, it's, you know, this, it's not in just this photo. It's like, is this photo is just a still photo. It's just, uh, <clears throat> the idea that you see the, <clears throat> how any community could go through this if you have people who decide to pull out of those communities and disinvest in those communities that they could just crumble and I think what happens is it can become like a wasteland you know where you have all this despair this crime and what wealthy people tend to do or wealthy communities, they wall, they make big walls or fence or 
secluded neighborhoods or communities where they keep the poor and the impoverished people out. And I could see that happening in um, a dystopian future of people who they don't have any empathy for those who have been evicted, families that go without, don't have food, and they don't have anything to eat, um, <clears throat> a place to live. You, you can see all these tents, more and more homelessness occurring, people falling into homelessness, or they're working more jobs than they should just to, just to feed themselves. And it's, this is the way the world is starting to look, I think, all and throughout. Just some areas, some places, it's happening faster than others. And I think it's only a matter of time that when years go by, you're going to see a change and it isn't for the better. And that's what it's starting to look like. You know, they're already talking about changing the cars and, you know, you got to get a smog check. You got to pay for registration. You got to pay for auto insurance. Then you got to pay a car note. Now you're talking about getting a brand new car with all these features, all this stuff in it. And, you know, which you don't have to get, but you know you're going to get it because how can you drive if you don't have certain basic features in the car? And so now you want us to get this car that it's all electric, which is going to be a lot more expensive to fix. And the parts might be expensive to, to replace if it, something needs to be replaced. And then these cars are non-gas cars. So that's an extra added expense because the car is an EV car. And so in 20, the year of 2030 is what they want to stop all the gas cars, all these cars that all of them do is take gas. So all the gas stations are going to probably change to EV stations where that you go and you charge your car up and there's working on trying to make the charging faster because sometimes you got to have the thing plugged in all night. It's just like having driving a giant cell phone. It has to be charged up if you want it to work. And uh, if it isn't charged up, then it's dead. It won't work. And then the cars don't go as far because they need a certain amount of uh, electric, you know, fuel to, to, to be able to make their trip. Um, and so you can only go a certain distance in those cars is what I've heard. And this is changing rapidly. And people don't see it right now because it's not in their face. But I see it and it doesn't look good. And I feel like they have the short-term... You ever heard of the short-term rentals? You live there only for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. What families can live like that? You know? But they... They've marketed on short-term rentals, just like they do the Airbnb. And so now it's it's just starting to get to a place that is uncomfortable, where just to have your basic needs met, you got to be making a certain amount of income just to be able to live in a, a place where you feel safe where you can sleep at night, where you can get up and, you know, clean up and then go to work the next day. You, that's becoming a luxury now. It's, it's going to get to the point where that, the, even just having a basic place to live is going to become a luxury. That should make people worry to some degree because it says, what have we not done right? What are we doing that isn't helping and I don't think people realize that greed has a lot to do with what's going on as well. That you have a select group of people who are making decisions and it affects millions of others. 
and it doesn't always affect you in the right ways. It affects you in the wrong ways. And so whenever you see this much of homelessness, and it just seems to increase, and when one person is trying to correct one problem and then another problem crops up where you have hundreds of people being evicted, all because the building owner wants to put in a new sprinkler system, tell me that you don't see something wrong with that. There, that it, greed isn't, isn't in that picture. It is. You know, if they can get rid of all these people and then make the building market rate adjusted where all of the apartments are now, they're not apartments, they're luxury condos. And then you jack up the price and make it so high that even the regular people who used to live there can't even move back in. And that's what, that's the way these things are, are you know, I've been seeing in um, seeing it in the articles, seeing it in the uh, news feeds. It doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't see this getting any better. And if people pretend and ignore long enough, it will be in your community. It will be in your neighborhood, and you will have to face something like what we hear the UK is faced with and what I feel the US, they don't talk about it, but I think we are going to have, we are in a housing crisis, housing, not only housing shortage of supply, but a crisis where it has to do with just not, people not helping, people not giving people the opportunity to be able to afford a place that's livable, to be able to live where they work. 